Hi guys. I remember in college, uh, my professor asked me, could I um, solve or write the ionic formula for sodium hydride? And I thought, you know, kind of quickly, could I write the formula for sodium hydride? And you know, I told my professor, I said, nah. All right. Start off with a bad joke. I, th I think that's becoming the thing now. Um, we're going to talk about Lewis dot structures, the third lesson in here. And in this lesson, we're going to um, cover something called resonance. So let's talk about Lewis dot structures and kind of finish up um, our, our diagrams and what they're all about right here. So, one of the things that Lewis dot structures are telling us is they tell us something, uh, you know, we're, we're making a model to try to make a prediction, try to understand something about um, a molecule, trying to some, understand some properties of a molecule and, and, and things we can kind of predict. So we, we model it, we draw it, and then we can kind of make some predictions. So um, let me explain a little bit about um, when we draw things and what we're learning about it. When there's a single bond, and in this particular example, I'm just using carbon-carbon. Um, carbon-carbon single bond has a length of 154 picometers and an energy strength on the bond of 347 kilojoules per meter. Now, this is not um, the same for every single bond. This is a carbon-carbon single bond. So every combination you can possibly think of will have a different length and strength. So these numbers are not what's important. What, what is important is the trend here. So if we take a look at a double bond, between two carbons. The bond length is 134 picometers, so it got a little bit shorter. And the strength between them is 614 kilojoules per mole, so it got a lot stronger. So the bond energy is greater in a double bond than a single bond, and a double bond is closer, the atoms are closer to each other in a double bond than they are in a single bond. And I often think about this as maybe an example with um, a weight hanging on, uh, there's a weight and it's attached with a rubber band. And a single bond would have run one rubber band. But if I attach two rubber bands to this weight, the weight would get closer, um, to, it, would get, it wouldn't be stretched down as far and it would be stronger. And so by that logic, what do you think would happen with a triple bond? And if you were to say, well, I would expect a triple bond to be even closer and the connection to have even more bond energy, more strength, you would be correct. So triple bonds are closer still and stronger. So if we take a look in actual values, it goes 154 picometers to 134 picometers to 120 picometers. So it's getting shorter. And this is a little more exaggerated in my diagram. Um, but the energy is getting stronger, 347 to, to 614 to 839. So there's more energy in the bonds of a triple bond. So this tells us something when we do Lewis dot structures. If we come up with a triple bond or a single bond or a double bond or whatever kind of bonds you have, it tells you a little bit about something, how far away the atoms are from each other. It tells you a little bit about the strength of it, where the weaknesses of a molecule are, you know, where things could be lost easier. So that's why Lewis dot structures have so much value. So we're going to do the Lewis dot structure for carbonate here. We're going to do it for carbonate and um, you can pause the video and try it yourself. That would be a good idea. Grab a periodic table and pause the video. Try it yourself. And I'm going to work it out with the connect the dots method right now. So you can double check your work. So carbonate. Carbonate is CO3 2 negative. That means you've got a carbon with four valence electrons. Check your periodic table to make sure. You have an oxygen. You have three oxygens. We've got one, two, three oxygens. So the carbonate's over here, and the oxygens have six valence electrons. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And carbonate also has a negative two charge. So I'm going to put two electrons in the bank. That means I have to use them somehow. The first thing you do when you do Lewis dot structures is make sure everything is connected together. So let's make sure everything's connected together by connecting the dots, la la la. All right, make sure everything's connected together. And now we analyze, connect everything together and then analyze, Do and, and if we analyze here, I see that I need another electron with this one. I got one, two, three, four 
unpaired electrons that need a pair or a bond or some sort, but I've only got two in the bank, so I can't give one to all four of these. So I'm going to have to share somewhere. So I'm going to share right here, make a double bond this direction. And now I analyze and I've got two to spare and I have two that need electrons. So I'm going to take one out of the bank, pair it up here, take another one out of the bank and pair it up here. Remember, it is a ion, so we're going to put brackets around it and say the charge that this whole thing has two extra electrons than it started with, so it's charged here. So um, that's how you would do the Lewis dot structure. Now let's take a look at some examples with this. We could have done the Lewis dot structure like this. This is what we did on our paper. Um, but if I were to number these oxygens, if I was to number them and say like the top one is number one, the bottom left one is number two, the bottom right one is number three, if I was to number these these three oxygens, one, two, three, um, I happen to have double bonded to the third oxygen, okay? I can rearrange and move the, 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 the atom, um, so, you know, it doesn't really make a difference where you put these bonds, but if I was to actually number them, I chose this oxygen to number. And it would still be fine, and a lot of times students say, well, you know what, I bonded mine to a different oxygen. Maybe I bonded mine to the first oxygen. And this is still correct, as well as if you bonded yours to, uh, arbitrarily, I'm just saying this, the second one, one, two, three. So you could have double bonded to any of them, it would be correct. The point being is, if we understand something about Lewis dot structures, is what we're looking at here is in carbonate, this Lewis dot structure is telling us that one of the oxygens would be closer and stronger. It would have a stronger bond, more energy in this bond, and it would be closer to the carbon. And these, and, and two of the other oxygens would be further away and not have as much any energy in the bond. That's what the Lewis dot structure is telling us about carbonate, no matter which one of these you would have drawn. The problem is, the reality with carbonate is these oxygens are actually all apart, um, equally apart from the oxygen, from the carbon. These oxygens are all equally apart from the carbon. Then none of them are particularly close or stronger. So, and on top of which, um, none of them are as weak or have as less energy as a single bond, and none of them are as strong as a double bond. So the Lewis dot structure seems to fail us here in a situation like this. And the reality of carbonate is it seems to be all of the possibilities together. In other words, the bond between this, this, this we'll say oxygen one, it's, it's kind of the average of all these possible ways we could have drawn this. So the bond here is, uh, it would be like a single bond, a single bond and a double bond average together. That this connection is not as long or as weak as a single bond, but it's not as short and as strong as a double bond. And the same goes for here. It would be a double bond average with a single and a single. And for oxygen three, which I arbitrarily named, would not be as, um, it would be kind of the average between a single, double, single. And the reality is, guys, that valence electrons can move around a molecule. So you will have a situation in a brief moment in time where you'll have um, maybe four valence electrons shared between this oxygen and this carbon, but they'll move around and another time you might find that they're over here and another time that they're over here. And remember Heisenberg's law of, uncer of uncertainty that we never know exactly the location and the momentum of a electron at any given point of time. They're moving all over the place. And so the reality is these bonds, it's not lopsided. It's kind of, it has electrons between here a little bit more than a normal single bond and a little bit less than a normal double bond. So it kind of averages out. So when you have situations like this, when you have resonance, that's what this is here, resonance, we draw all the possibilities of all the possible locations the electrons can be moved around um, and that shows you an actually more complete picture. So resonance is, is really all these pictures stacked up on each other. We represent it with a double arrowed, uh, a double sided arrow to say it's this one, this one, and this one. The brackets are around it because it's an ion, it's charged, it's a polyatomic ion. If it wasn't a polyatomic ion, I wouldn't need these brackets around there. So in this picture here, all three structures exist simultaneously and the strength of all three bonds are the same. So none of these are act as a single and none of these act as a double. The bond length and strength is somewhere between a single and double bond. So resonance is different ways we can 
rearrange the electrons. I think that's the important thing to understand. When we did the Lewis dot structure, it was just different ways we could rearrange the electrons. I chose to double bond at this point here, but if I went back in time and I gave, um, let me use a different color pen here. If I went back in time and I gave, I didn't make this bond and I didn't put the electron here, it was up here, and I didn't put the electron here, it was over here. I could have instead, remember there's there's one here and here, I could have possibly double bonded here instead and given this electron to here and this electron to, to this one here. So there's a pair over here and a pair over here. I could have done it a different way. If I could rearrange the electrons in different ways, that's what resonance is. Um, resonance is not rearranging the molecule. Resonance would not be, okay, I'll put the carbon here and then I'll put the oxygen here and an oxygen here. This is not resonance. Rearranging the nuclei, rearranging the atoms is not resonance. Resonance is rearranging how you could distribute the electrons. Just some hints. You will only see resonance structures when you have um, double bonds and triple bonds. Single bonds will never have resonance because, um, in other words, single bonds, if you did something like uh, CH4, let me just let me get another piece of paper here. If I was to do something like CH4, which is called methane, there's no resonance here because there's there's nothing that you can you, you can't rearrange the electrons any way than it is right now so single bond structures do not have resonance if you have a double bond it's possible you have resonance or a triple bond just think could I have instead double bonded over here instead of where I chose and if you can then you draw all those structures with double arrows that's what resonance is so I'm gonna show you guys a um, some practice questions here and what I would like you to do is pause the video and try to solve these um, and then unpause it and see if you got them right. So pause it right now and then I'm going to work them out for you so you have the correct answers to these. So hopefully you've tried at this point. So the first one is going to be nitrate. So you got nitrate. I'm sorry. The first one is nitrite and then you have nitrate and O3 is ozone. So we're going to do these right now. So number one, hopefully, you tried it and you said NO2 negative and you wrote nitrogen has five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. That one's kind of wacky up there. I didn't like that. One, two, three, four, five. And you have oxygen, which has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you have one in the bank. It's negatively charged. So we're going to put one up here. I connect. Make sure everything's connected first. Don't double or triple bond yet. Make sure everything's connected first and now analyze. Okay. I've got one in the bank and I've got three electrons left over. So if I share two of them, then it's going to work out okay. So if I share, let's say I'm sharing this one. Then I take it out of the bank and put it over here. But I could have very well have shared this way and put it over here. So that's my rough. And remember the last step when you write Lewis dot structures is to write it clean. So in this situation, I could have done it like this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I did do it like this. Double bonded here. And that was what I did, but I could have double bonded over here. So another possibility would have been to double bond this oxygen and put two lone pairs on it like I did here. Make a nitrogen and a single bond over here. So nitrite has two possibilities for resonance. Let's take a look at nitrate. Nitrate is NO3 negative. So we have nitrogen again with five and I've got three oxygens with one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got one in the bank again. Make sure everybody's connected, which we do here. That's good. Now I've got one in the bank and I've got 
wow, I've got one, two, three, and I can't make triangles. I can't connect this way. I know a lot of people are going to want to, but the member of bonds are made up of electrons which repel each other, and this is just too sharp of an angle to make a triangle. You don't see circular things um, commonly until you get to about five. So three is a little too sharp, but, but five is, is kind of a common situation. So I'm kind of stuck here. Now we analyze. When you look at it and you kind of think, I don't know where to go from here. I'm, I'm analyzing it. I don't know where to go. Um, try to rearrange things. Use that bank to make withdrawals and deposits. So if it kind of looks stuck, just give yourself a little time to think about it and just try to look at it another way. I'm going to make a deposit. I'm going to take one of these paired electrons from my center one and I'm going to deposit one of those in the bank. And now all of a sudden there's a lot of possibilities. I can double bond three different ways. So let's just do it this way first. I'm going to double bond over here. And then I can take out of the bank and pair up pair up and now everything's made its octet so I double bonded this way for this one so there was a possibility of going two pairs double bonded to a nitrogen there's no lone pairs on that nitrogen now it's got a single bond to this oxygen and another single bond to another oxygen and this has a negative charge I could have also um, double bonded to the right one. So I could have done, this is another option. <clears throat> that was another option. And I could have also um, double bonded down. So that was a third option I could have done. oxygen down so this was another option so all of these were a resonance possibility for nitrate there was three possibilities there all right the last one uh, number three was ozone and that's o3 there's no charge on this one so let's take a look at the possibilities for ozone oxygen has six valence electrons and there are three of them. Okay, no charge. So I'm gonna connect everybody together. Got everything connected together. And now you're definitely gonna say, oh, let's just make a triangle again. Remember what I said, we're not making triangles. Triangles are not okay. The bond angle is a little too sharp on this. So that just seems like we want to do. So we have to stop and think and analyze. And when you get stuck and you're like, I just don't know what to do, try using the bank. Try taking something off of the middle, something off the middle one and put it in the bank and see if something jumps out at you, another idea. So if I do that, let's say I take one off the middle one, I put it in the bank. Now I see some possibilities opening up. And if it doesn't, then just put it back on there. But if you get stuck, try that. Pick the middle one. Don't pick the outside ones. So take take that, put it out. And I see this like, oh, I could double bond over here. I could double bond over here. So I'm going to double bond over here just because. And then I'm going to take it back out of the bank and put it back in my molecule and put it here. So ozone, I double bonded this way. And this one had three lone pairs. So a possibility would be an oxygen with three lone pairs, single bonded to an oxygen with one lone pair, which is double bonded to an oxygen with two lone pairs. I could have also done it the other way. So the other option would have looked like this. And it actually exists as both. Ozone, um, the oxygen, this would indicate, remember a double bond would indicate that this oxygen, these two are closer together and this one's further away. This has more bond energy than this one. And this, but the reality is with ozone, the oxygen, the center oxygen is right in the middle. They're equal distance from both other oxygens. And that's why resonance really helps to explain the structure of ozone because this one makes it look like it's more, it, these two are closer. And then the second example looks like these two are closer. But the reality is if you blend them together, it that's the reality that neither oxygen is as far away as a single bond and neither oxygen is as close as a double bond. So I hope you understand and um, appreciate the the value of uh, Lewis structures to this point they they become more valuable as we go on um, to make predictions about things 
anyways, if you have any questions, please make sure you contact me and let me know. I'm here to help, and that's what I like doing, guys. So good luck, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye.